Hi guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my 20 week pregnancy update. I have been kind of slacking off with these updates a little bit because we are in the process of selling our home and buying a new one, which is unbelievably stressful. I didn't realize how stressful it would be. So I've been not keeping up on pregnancy update videos very well, but the 20 week update is just a really kind of milestone halfway through the pregnancy and there's there's some really exciting things happening with this baby that I'm very excited to share with you. And so I was like, I have to do my 20 week pregnancy update. So <laughs> here we are doing this update and let's get right into it. So the biggest and most exciting change is how I'm able to feel the baby. So it kind of went from only being able to feel like flutters and then I would start to be able to feel the baby stretch and now it's finally I can feel pronounced kicks and punches and we can even feel it from the outside and I always get so excited when I get to that point when the baby's big enough to for me to actually feel the kicks particularly when they're big enough for me to feel it from the outside. It was kind of different this time because normally there's kind of a long stretch where I can feel the baby kick from the inside but it's not big enough to kick you, you can't feel it from the outside. But the first kick I felt was big enough to feel it from the outside. It just went from no kicks to big kicks. So the baby usually is kicking over on the left side of my stomach, right at the bottom. That's normally where I've been feeling all of these kicks. As my babies get bigger, they all my babies seem to kind of follow the same pattern because my uterus is a little heart-shaped. So it seems like they kind of generally fall into the same position. As the baby gets bigger, it'll probably go head down with its butt to my left side and its feet to my right side. And then I'll feel kicks up near my ribs up here in the right. That's what my other two pregnancies have done, just right exactly. My midwife said that can totally be because of how my uterus is shaped. That's just the natural tendency they have. And Luke has been able to feel the baby kick from the outside too, which is something that is so exciting for I mean, both me and him, and I feel like when it gets to that point, he's just a little bit more involved in the pregnancy. He like wants to like put his hand on my stomach and feel in, in case the baby kicks while we're watching a movie or something. And it's just like getting far enough along that it feels a lot more real to both of us. It's not just kind of this more abstract thing, like you can't even feel it at all. You just know it's in there, but you're not sure. And then as your belly gets bigger, it becomes more real. But then once you feel kicks and when your husband can feel kicks, it's like, oh, there's like a real little person in there. It's so cool. I actually get a little bit addicted to feeling for kicks at this point. I will just like have my hand on the spot where the baby's most likely to kick because I just want to feel every single one because it's the most exciting thing ever. And I'll just like be feeling around for the baby. And it's like, it almost becomes an obsession a little bit. Like I just, love feeling it so much and if I'm sitting there I'm gonna be feeling for baby kicks. We have still been ridiculously busy with house stuff, selling the house, and also keeping up with my other two kids. But now that the baby's more active, I just I just notice the baby all day long. Where before it was where I could almost forget I was pregnant, I was so busy. But now baby just doesn't let me forget because they're very active. I really hope baby isn't affected by all the stress that we've been under lately. It's a little bit hectic trying to sell your house and buy another house, especially in this crazy real estate market we're in. It's just kind of a very stressful thing. But I hope that baby isn't affected too much by all the stress I'm under. With my other pregnancies, I was able to just, you know, take it a lot easier and there just wasn't this big life change kind of blooming over me. I'm sure the baby will be just fine because people live through way more stressful things than that when they're pregnant. So. The baby will be just fine, but I have been a little worried about that. And man, when you're pregnant, thinking about moving is not fun. I have started feeling very like nesting. I have been just really into decorating our house and making beds when I don't normally like to make beds and keeping the house clean and just wanting everything very organized. I'll do, I've been doing like more deep organization. And so knowing we have this big move coming up soon is really like putting a halt on my nesting instincts. And it's like making me feel a little tense. So 
I don't love moving during pregnancy, but it's better than moving right after when I have a newborn. That is something. So I'm just doing my best to not think about it. I'm just trying to give it up to God as much as possible because there's really nothing we can do about it at this point. It's kind of a waiting game right now. A lot of stuff in real estate is just waiting, which I absolutely hate waiting. And I wish things could just move along faster. But I've been just trying to give up all my stress to God and know that he's going to take care of us and whatever happens, he's doing what's best for us. It's in our best interest, even if we don't know it right now. So. I'm just trying to keep that in mind and also do my best to just not think about it as much as possible. So I just had another midwife appointment. It was about, I was almost 20 weeks. Right now I'm a little past 20 weeks, but I had another midwife appointment. It's only actually my second one this pregnancy because this early, I mean, there's not really a lot that you absolutely have to check and I really trust my body. I trust that I'll know if something's going wrong. And then also at a certain stage, when you're so early, there's nothing you can do about it anyway. And just with how busy we are, and my midwife lives an hour away, I just decided to do less midwife appointments this pregnancy. So I had one around nine weeks for the first appointment, and then I had my just my second one now at almost 20 weeks. And then I'm just kind of playing it by ear whenever I feel like I need to be checked up on or talk to her about something, ask her questions then I'll text her and make another appointment. And that's been working out great for us. So she checked my fundal height, where you measure from, it's, I think it's the top of your uterus to your pubic bone. And then however many centimeters I think it is, is how many weeks you should be. So I was about, I think I was actually supposed to be right at 20 weeks at that point, but I was measuring 19. My dates are a little off because my cycles weren't regular when we got pregnant because I hadn't been having cycles long enough. So I could be 19 weeks. It could be 20 weeks. I don't have an exact due date either, so I'm just not at all concerned about it. The baby will come when the baby's ready. So I could be a little less far along than we thought. Especially since I normally do start feeling pronounced kicks a little bit sooner than this. So that could be also that I'm maybe a week or two behind where I thought I was, but we'll see when the baby's actually born. Because I do, with my last two pregnancies, I have had them right around my due date. I had my daughter three days after my due date and then my son was born on his due date. So we'll see when this baby decides to actually come out. I also had a glute glucose test. Everything came back normal from that. I She does the urine strip test, checking for like hydration, bladder infections and all of that sort of stuff. And that looked really great as well, which I was surprised that it said I was hydrated because I struggle with that so much in pregnancy, well, in general, I hate drinking water. So I figured I would be dehydrated, but I wasn't for some reason. She also took my blood pressure and pulse rate, which were fine. My blood pressure, I thought might be a little high because I'm a little stressed out, but my blood pressure was actually perfect. So that's good. Well, the one thing she did see on the urine strip test is that my blood sugar was a little bit low, but I also hadn't eaten breakfast that day. I just been drinking coffee, so that would totally do it. But something I really love about midwives is that all this like more medical stuff is just really fast. She just kind of does as we're having conversation, but like most of the appointment is just talking like friends. The appointments are usually an hour or more long, and so we were just kind of catching up on what's going on with our house situation. And she's really excited when we finally do find a house and move in, she's really excited to come and see it before the baby's born, so she, she knows where to go when I call her and tell her I'm in labor. So lately I've been having a new new thing. I haven't had this with my other pregnancies before, but it's round ligament spasms. So round ligament cramps are super common for me in pregnancy. That's like almost one of my first symptoms. Even with my first pregnancy, I just get a lot of round ligament cramps. And especially at night when I'm really over, they just, they just happen a lot. So I've really gotten used to the round ligament cramping, but with this pregnancy, they actually started spasming, where it'll cramp up so bad and then it just doesn't go away. Like it's just in this bad spasm and like it doesn't help to massage it. it. Normally I can make it go away by like going and laying down on a certain side. It always does it on my right side. My left ligament doesn't do that. It's just the right one. So that's been new and weird. And it seems to especially do it when I'm wearing like I have compression yoga pants and they're a little bit tighter around the belly and it seems like my belly just does not like that. 
which is a bummer because I like to wear the compression pants for my varicose veins, but then it makes my round ligaments spasm. So that's a little bit annoying, but they've been okay. For like the last week, I haven't gotten one at all, which has been really nice. And today I'm actually even wearing my compression yoga pants and it hasn't done anything so far. So I don't exactly know what causes it, but my midwife said that's totally normal. I've been having a lot of muscle cramps lately. I really need to start taking my magnesium supplement again. I like to drink that calm magnesium drink and then also I make a magnesium lotion which is actually it's more effective to take magnesium as a lotion instead of taking it internally but I should probably do some of each because my muscle cramps have been really bad lately they'll just cramp my legs will cramp up in the middle of the night I've even been getting cramps in my like shoulders and arms and like a lot of places I don't normally get muscle cramps. I will link the recipe that I have for my magnesium lotion because it is really nice and it's, I just need to make some because once it's made, it's like really fun to use and I actually remember to use it, but I just procrastinate a lot. So I have been so bad about my yoga lately. For the first like 15 weeks of my pregnancy, I did yoga at least four days a week. My cousin comes over and she does it with me so she keeps me accountable which is really nice because I really have a hard time actually doing it unless someone's like coming to do it with me so that was really nice but then when we started this whole house selling and buying process like once we got our house listed I kind of decided I needed to take a break because I had to keep the house like ridiculously clean with two kids and it would, I just couldn't think about anything extra. So I haven't been doing it for like four or five weeks now and I can definitely tell a difference. I've been very stiff lately. I feel like my muscle cramps have been worse from that. Just a lot more stiff and achy all around, which isn't very fun. And so I, we're going to start up yoga again, I think this next week. We've got kind of a gap while we're, we're under contract on our house and a house we would like to buy. So right now, while we're kind of in just this limbo period of waiting for things like inspections and appraisals and all this stuff, it's not like I have showings every single day. So I would like to get back into doing our yoga until we have to move and we're like packing the house up. Then I'll take another break and we can move and get settled and then we can start up yoga again after that. So, but I, do, I really feel like I need to do the yoga again because it was really making a difference. I was feeling really flexible. Actually, I was the most flexible I've ever been in my life with doing it so consistently during this pregnancy. And my hips normally get so sore during pregnancy and they have been doing that since I stopped yoga. It was it was really helping more than I even realized. So that's top priority, something I need to get back on. The Virgo's veins have still been pretty annoying. As I talked about in one of my other, like last update or the one before that, I got my varicose veins back a lot sooner this time. And they're on my yoni. There's none on my legs yet. That'll happen as I get older, my midwife says. So they're not in a great spot to use compression pants for. I've heard there's like compression underwear that I would like to look into, but I've been trying out. I had a new idea. I, You know how you use padsicles for postpartum, just soreness and stuff. I was like, what if I used padsicles? Because ice will help with inflammation. And then also I made a calendula tea to actually be the thing that freezes up the pad with like lemongrass and lavender and some other essential oil. I don't remember what it was. So I made a calendula tea and added those essential oils and then put it on one of my pads and then froze it. And then now when my varicose veins get really inflamed, I will take a pad out of the freezer and put it on. And it actually helps quite a bit. It is quite temporary relief. Like it doesn't last. Like as soon as the pads warmed up, the inflammation kind of comes back. So I don't know how well I like it or if it's worth doing, but it definitely helps while the pad stays frozen, which is nice. My skin feels like more sensitive. My nipples have been really sore. Like my, just my breasts and especially my nipples have been so sore lately. They have never been this sore during pregnancy. And I wonder if it's because Demi did nurse partway through this pregnancy, if that changes anything like that. But that's been a big thing lately, but it's like almost hurts to put my bra on. Like, so sensitive. A little TMI, but you know, this is a pregnancy update, so there you go. Now let's see the bump. Here's the bump. I feel like it hasn't grown a ton. It got really big in the beginning, 
and then now it's kind of like evened out and it's not growing super fast even though I feel the baby getting bigger but my stomach is not really getting bigger. So here's my yoga compression pants. But I think that's all for this 20 week pregnancy update. I'm I'm a little bit like surprised that I'm like halfway through this pregnancy already. It seems like it's going by really fast just because of how busy we are. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing what's been going on lately and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.